what advice would you give to someone who's like right there at the door, who knows what they want to do, but is afraid to take that first step? Do it scared. Do it scared. I mean, it's one of those things where we we always will find evidence in things we believe. And so if I'm going to say, you know what, I don't know that I'm ready. I don't know that I'm prepared. I don't know that now is the right time. I'm going to find evidence that supports all of those thoughts that I have. And we have to remember mm -hmm. that when we take action, confidence and motivation tends to follow. It's, it, we think it's the other way around. We think I have to be confident, I have to be motivated, then I can go. And, that, and, and I'm saying, no, take action, just go. And you're going to gain confidence and motivation beyond that. So staying in the same vein of faith, this is like saying, hey God, uh, show me and I'll trust you. And he's saying, no, trust me and I'll show you. And this is where it's yeah. like, you know what? Take action, just do it. Just take that step and then take the next step and then take the next step. Too many of us are focused on the end in mind and not the steps that it takes in order to get here. And we get overwhelmed and we find all the reasons why we shouldn't take that step. So I'd say just do it scared. Well, dude, thank you so much for uh, taking some time to be with us on the Pet Waste Millionaire podcast. Um, I saw you had a guest uh, on your podcast recently, Chip Baker, who is a friend of ours. Um, and immediately I was like, oh, if Chip was on his podcast, I'm sure he's awesome. So I sent you a quick message and uh, we connected and we're able to schedule you getting to spend some time with us. So thank you again. Um, Josh, would you mind uh, just explaining for our listeners a little bit about yourself and what it is that you do and, and the type of impact that you want to have in your community? I'd be happy to, Ben, uh, EJ. Thank you guys both for having me. Uh, it's an honor to be on. And, um, and I agree, Chip is an amazing guy. And so um, I was really delighted when you reached out to me and, and uh, we struck up this conversation. So um, yeah, my name is Josh Parnell and I'm a leadership coach, trainer and speaker. And so the bulk of my business is one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, so I work with a lot of small business owners and uh, some executive level CEO, C-suite uh, level um, team members who are formally leading people. And so a lot of what I do is I work with people on how to lead people. Um, we, we see a lot of high performing team members who do really well at the jobs that they do, who get promoted into a formal leadership role. And that's like going from a player to a coach. But a lot of us struggle to stay in the coach's seat. And so what happens is we're in the coach's seat and we see our team members doing these processes that we've mastered that got us here to begin with. And we go back out of the coach's seat and say, hey, watch out, guys. I'm going to do it for you. I don't have time to teach you. I'm just going to show you how to do it. And this is the old adage of give a man to fish and he'll eat for a day or teach a man to fish and he'll eat for a lifetime. And so what I do is I teach people how to teach their team how to fish, how to lead, how to coach, how to train and how to manage. All four of those are necessary, but all four are done different. And so – um, that's the bulk of my coaching. Um, I do training, uh, uh, training programs as well. I do about one, one, one per quarter and I do speaking engagements as well. Just released, uh, my first book called leading a legacy, how to live today to make an impact for tomorrow. This got released uh, in late January and I have my own podcast as well called the Josh Parnell leadership podcast. But, um, I'll tell you both guys, I love what I do. I'm very passionate about what I do. Um, I think Steve Harvey was quoted as saying, your career is what you're paid for, but your calling is what you're made for. And I don't know if mm -hmm. this is my calling, but it certainly feels like it sometimes. And so um, really, really enjoy what I'm doing. I'm really honored to be on, on, your, on your show today. That's awesome. But when man. you wake up every day passionate, that's when you kind of know, right? That it's it's yeah. your calling. When you're passionate or working towards something yeah. that you're passionate about. So tell me, I, Josh, how did you get your start in this? Like, how did you build up mm -hmm. How did you build up uh, to this and to where you're at now? What's your what's your background? Where'd you get started? Sure. So, um, yeah, I went to uh, I went to University of North Texas uh, in Denton for about a year and a half and um, plan on being there for four years. But after about a year and a half, UNT said, hey, Josh, thanks for playing. But your grades are terrible. You need to leave. And so <laughs> I had some growing up to do pretty quickly. And this is around the time that 9-11 happened. And it got me thinking about joining the military. And so um I had a strong interest in filmmaking way back when, this is over 20 years ago, and I found out that uh, videography was a career field I could do in the Air Force. So I went to my mm -hmm. nearest Air Force recruiter's office, and um, long story short, I'm not going to tell you the whole, the whole story. In fact, if you want to read it, it's in my book, Chapter mm -hmm. One, Leading yeah. Legacy. But, uh, but I will say this. I, I joined the Air Force um, expecting to be a videographer. Um, that's not the, the, the path that God had planned for me. Instead, I went into uh, – a four-year enlistment into security forces. 
And, um, but I really enjoyed that experience. It was necessary for me in the path that I eventually went on. And so did a four-year enlistment and got my degree after the Air Force, um, went to the oil and gas industry for about five years, and then found my way to uh, an amazing company called Christian Brothers Automotive. And I worked as a corporate trainer and corporate coach for almost a decade. And our team created and facilitated training programs that um, really focused on sales, uh, service, um, really, you know, the guest experience, workflow management, uh, phone skills, and eventually really found my niche um, as a leadership trainer and leadership coach there. And so uh, was able to create a leadership development program um, and eventually um, took over as the host of a leadership podcast that a good friend of mine initially created. And the last three years or so I was there was really focused on not only leadership as a whole, but also growth uh, personally and professionally in myself. Um, I finally started really investing in myself. And I think that if there's any unsolicited advice I could give to anyone, I'm going to, I'm always going to say that the greatest investment any of us can make is in ourself. And so I hired a counselor years ago and very quickly realized I went, my mindset went from, I don't know that I can afford this because I wasn't making this a part of my budget mm -hmm. to very soon after realizing I can't not afford this. Um, what, yeah. what counseling was doing for me was really helping me shift my perspective. And with perspective, the way that we view things drives the way that we do things. So I hired a counselor and then shortly thereafter um, started attending different seminars and conventions and hired a coach eventually. And so fast forward uh, to about a year ago, I eventually took a step of faith into this terrifying world of entrepreneurship as a leadership coach, trainer, and speaker. And still to this day, I work with my own counselor once a month. I work with my own coach twice a month. And I'm married to a licensed professional counselor. So I get free counseling even when I don't want it, uh, which probably, <laughs> probably quite often. But we all need it. And so um, so that's what I'm doing today. And I uh, absolutely love what I do. Man, that's yeah. awesome. So your journey went from military to professional corporate world and, and, and in mm -hmm. the franchise industry, correct? You were leading. Correct. You were working on training systems and processes that didn't just handle, you know, a corporate organization, that's a franchise organization. So you're teaching right. franchisees and systems and processes that franchisees, and maybe even yourself, were you also training, uh, doing training with franchisee employees? Correct. So we were training the franchisees, yeah. We're, yeah, a franchisee, service managers, service advisors, a handful of technicians as well. But it was, it was very heavily focused on processes and procedures. However, yeah. what we're able to incorporate, especially in a, any kind of service-based industry, as you guys know, is you got to have that personal connection. There's got to be that personal touch when you're serving yeah. people. And so we, we treated yeah. this experience as a relationship first, and the transaction is simply a byproduct of exceptional standard-setting service. Right. And Christian Brothers is known for that, uh, mm -hmm. if, if I understand correctly. They're known for being very friendly, uh, and mm -hmm. especially in an industry that isn't always known for, for customer service. That's right. It's a, you know, it, especially in the automotive repair industry, trust is such a huge thing. And, um, and yeah. the moment we, we begin to lose trust, that's when really things begin to potentially fall to the wayside. And so in order to uh, connect with folks, we have to have that foundation of safety and trust so that we can provide clarity and direction. And so we talk quite yeah. heavily about connection before content and how we can connect with people through authenticity, humility, and vulnerability. And then we, as long as we can fine tune the processes along the way, we focus on the relationship, we fine tune the processes that should raise the level of service to a standard that is unlike any other. Absolutely. So I I'd love to hear. So Josh, did were you a part of creating the content for the training program that you were supplying? Okay, so it wasn't someone else developed it and you came in then and just carried the torch. You were a part of building it from scratch. A little bit of both. So when I first joined the team almost a decade ago, um, there was already a program, a training program that was very uh, uh, well received throughout the brand. And so I had an opportunity to walk into something that was already established and help create it and evolve it to something even better. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was helpful for me in my young career because I had never been a part of something that was mm -hmm. where, where I'm creating a program from scratch. Um, Cause it, it is definitely uh, more challenging than one might think. And so when I walked into this uh, opportunity, 
I walked into a proven process, a proven program that I was able to help grow and develop. But beyond mm. that, I was able to use those skills and also use my creativity and innovation uh, to create other programs. So by the time I left, you know, I joined the, I joined the team and there was one program when I left, there were six programs and I had uh, the pleasure of um, really being a, a heavy player in the creation of all five of the, of the, of the rest or the, the other five mm -hmm. programs. So uh, <laughs> you're like, there's PTSD going on from when I started um, developing a training program for a couple of our, our brands. I did it from scratch, or at least what it mm -hmm. felt like was from scratch. It was from scratch, pretty much. And what I think <laughs> about now, like, oh my gosh, I would have done things so different um, if I was asked to do it again. Um, and, and so anyways, the part of the reason I ask is like, so what was it that you walked into it, into a program that was already proven? It was, you know, effective. You said you brought your own creativity and influence into it. What was it that you started to build upon to elevate that program? Well, one of the biggest, um, I don't, I don't know that I want to say changes, but I don't, not, I don't, I don't know that I don't want to say changes. I'll say this. One of, one of the biggest initiatives that we pushed was let's focus on the people first. Um, when I began there, um, I was hired as a sales development trainer and about two years into my career there at Christian brothers, um, a, uh, a change was made that allowed me the opportunity to, to, to lead that department all of a sudden. And so one of the, the, the biggest initiatives that I made almost immediately was let's focus on the people. Let's focus on serving the people. Let's focus on the experience being one of service. So we even rebranded our department from the sales development department to the service development department. And then we changed the names of our titles from sales to service. Um, I'm just a big believer in the fact that when you serve people, love people, take care of people, the transaction is a natural byproduct. So it's important mm -hmm. to know how to do the sales. It's important to know um, the KPIs that drive sales. We know that we need to make, we need to make a profit in order to stay in business, but let's focus on the people first and then we can fine tune the processes along the way. So, um, you know, that's, that's one of the focuses that I, that I was able to bring was let's, let's serve these, these attendees, these training attendees, the same way we're asking them to serve their guests. Mm -hmm. So were you able to, in many ways, kind of pluck a lot of the stuff that you helped to develop thereafter at Christian Brother Automotive to what it is that you're providing your clients today? To some degree, I mean, there's um, a, a, there's a lot of there's portions of the programs that I was able to create from scratch. It's it's my own content. It's my own delivery as well. I mean, um, mm -hmm. the, the beauty and the way the department was was laid out was as I was bringing new team members on board. Um, I one of the first things I would express is, hey, look, you were hired for a reason. You are great at what you do. We need you on this team. And so you're empowered to to create and innovate and try things. And if it works, great. If it doesn't, that's OK. We're still learning along the way. So bring your own flavor to the table, essentially. And mm -hmm. um, so in doing so, by the time I left, there were, you know, six different programs. Um, there were seven different team members on the, in the department, all of which were bringing their own flair, if you will, to to the programs. Mm -hmm. So uh, upon leaving, there were things that um, that if it primarily if it was something that I created, I definitely took out of CBA and uh, was able to kind of further hone and tweak along the way. And just like anything, you know, nothing changes if nothing changes. And so um, even what I'm doing today, I mean, I'm, I'm doing a, a training here in about a week or so. In fact, it's a week from today in the Houston area. And a year ago, this training looks significantly different than it does now. And you know, we're always we're always tweaking. We're always working on improving. And it, it was new ago a year. It was new a year ago, right? This training. It was new a year ago. It was new a year so ago. So what are some mm -hmm. things you've learned? Uh, you just got to experience some of our uh, podcasting technical difficulties. <laughs> me find at proper sound, but like, what are some things you learned in the previous year uh, in, in how it's changed? EJ, that is a fantastic question. So I think the number one thing that I that I really was able to to hone in on. I think we've all heard the phrase: "People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care." And that's something I, I'm a big believer in, and, and I was, and I have been for years. And so we talk about creating safety and trust so that we can provide clarity and direction. And one of the ways that we can provide clarity and direction is through effective communication and pairing that with what I call the roadmap of delegation. 
And so what I've been able to bring to a lot of my clients is this introduction and implementation of one-on-one -on -one meetings and what meetings really should look like. Anytime you hear the word meeting, you almost get your eyes glazed over and it's like, oh, here we go. There's meeting, you know, there's this negative connotation about meetings and there should be. Um, there, there's so many meetings that could have been an email. There's so many meetings about the meeting pre and post. There's this death by meeting approach. And for a lot of folks, we go to a meeting and we talk about a lot of things, but there's not a lot of action beyond that meeting. And so yeah. something I've been able to instill in a lot of my clients is really what a meeting should look like, a one-on-one -on -one and a team meeting, how to apply calls to action beyond that, how to follow up on the follow through, how to communicate effectively and how to delegate accordingly. And all of that is actually stuff that I wasn't really even focusing on heavily at Christian Brothers, but through my workings as a coach and especially in a one-on-one -on -one, uh, capacity, this is where I'm seeing a lot of growth and a lot of, a lot of yeah. value, a lot of benefit for my huge, clients. Huge need. Huge need, no doubt. Huge. You mentioned mm -hmm. Death by Meeting. Have you read that book? I read that book like eight years ago. Is Have it, you ever heard of that I mean, book? Is it Patrick Lencioni who wrote it? I don't know. I don't remember. It's an older book, I, but it's okay. called Death by Meeting. That's the name of the book. Interesting. It was I, in I, I haven't I, read it. But... Audio. I, I, it was audio for me. I'm, I'm oh, big no, at audio good. books. It is Patrick Lencioni. It is? Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 You're right. Good, good memory. Uh, thanks. <laughs> I, 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 I haven't read. I'm, I'm a Lencioni fan, but I haven't, I haven't read that one. But it, hey, it's, it's a real thing for a reason. Oh, no doubt. Um, another question I was going to ask you, talking about meetings and how you kind of found this as a unique selling proposition and need out there that you can help. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you, have you studied any about the uniqueness of how Jeff Bezos uh, ran meetings and how he would make he would have people read these long memos as like the for almost awkward silence the first five minutes. Have you ever read anything about this or anything? So you're, you're jogging my memory, EJ. I, if I recall a few years ago, I remember reading something about how he, he sends out uh, a, a bit of an agenda beforehand. Yeah, you read through it, it and then you come in and the meeting is significantly shorter because you've already gotten the, the, the cliff notes, yeah. something like that. But it's not just him sending that out ahead of time. It's not just him. And it, it's, it's everybody in the meeting having their part and bringing and basically writing a, and memos, a bad word too, just like memos, uh, or meetings are bad words. Memos are bad words too, but he basically yeah. makes every person in the meeting. And then he also points out that no meeting should be so big. There should, there, there can't be any more people in a meeting than that, that I think it's two cheese pizzas or something like that can, can feed. Uh, okay. Something like okay. It's something, it's something cheesy, uh, cheesy, no pun intended. Like, uh, there you if go. you can, if two people can, if it can, if two pizzas, however many that can feed, that's it. I, I like that. I've never heard that, but I like, it's almost like the, 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 the two pizza rule. And, and we all know what the two pizza rule rule is now. So I, I like that. That's a good, <laughs> I, I'm going to look, look up uh, some of that some more. So, Josh, could you share a little bit about your book, Leading a Legacy? Like, what is it about? Why did you author it? Uh, and maybe we can ask Billy if we can stop hammering. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, Billy's got to do what he's got to do. Done that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, uh, I'm happy to chat about it. Uh, so it's called Leading a Legacy, How to Live Today to Make an Impact for Tomorrow. And... Um, Really what it's about is exactly what the, the subtitle is. What are we doing today to make an impact for tomorrow? Um, at the end of our lives, we're going to be leaving some kind of legacy one way or the other. And so yeah. the legacy that we lead today will determine the legacy that we leave tomorrow. So a lot of what I focus on, especially early on, is we begin with the leadership mindset. Um, something I share is that humans have up to 60,000 thoughts per day and studies show that 80% of our thoughts are negative and 90% of our thoughts are repetitive. So it's no wonder why we regularly experience stress and worry and doubt and concern and fear, but we know that fear is simply false evidence appearing real and we're always gonna find evidence in the things that we believe. So what I help folks do in the book and my coaching is we, we recognize that our thoughts will dictate our feelings and our feelings will dictate our actions and our actions will dictate our legacy. So if we want to change our legacy, it begins with our thoughts. So how are we challenging the thoughts that we're having? One of the greatest mistakes that any of us can make is assuming all of our thoughts are true. And so what I help people do is I work on some mindset stuff first, then get into some leadership and some life stuff along the way. And 
one of the one of the really the primary messages that I want anyone to take away from this book is the fact that you are a leader, and here's why: you are one of one. You have your own upbringing, your own life experiences that no one else has, and because of that, you have your own perspective that is not shared by anyone else in the entire world. So, since you have your own perspective, you have the ability to be influential. Now, you can influence positively or negatively as well. So, you can influence、uh, in good ways and bad ways. We have to remember that we are contagious. We can either infect or we can affect. So, ask yourself, what are people catching from me? I want to make sure that I'm in. A positive influence in the lives of those around me, and if we can influence people around us, we can affect change. And anyone who's a change agent is a leader. So this this book is really for anyone who is experiencing、uh, levels of imposter syndrome. Maybe they don't believe in themselves. Maybe they don't they don't view themselves as a leader. Maybe they think that I I need to have a certain title before I'm actual before I'm an actual leader. Maybe they're viewing themselves as a as a boss and not a leader, but they don't know the difference. And so, being able to、yeah. explain what a leader really is, and how to serve people, how to lead people through servant leadership,、um, yeah. is is kind of the, the the overarching message of the entire book. Man, well, I'm sold. One last one question, not last question by any means, but one question: <laughs> Is there an audio version? <laughs> Great question. Yeah, there is an audio version. So there's there's an audio. So you can you can find the book on、uh, on Audible. Um, and then I do want to okay, share also、great. something that、uh, I, I'm really I really am proud of is、um, if you, if you've heard of Damon West, Damon、um, is is probably most notable for、uh, the coffee bean story, and Damon uh, served uh, he he was sentenced to 65 years in prison but but didn't serve the entirety of that time but he he's been able to get to he, he got out of prison about a decade ago and has been traveling the country. Um, sharing the story of, of, the, of the coffee bean,、um, and so、um, Damon wrote my forward for for the book, and、um, and I even share the coffee bean story in the book as well. Awesome! I look forward to doing the audio. I'm an audio book guy. I'm not very good at. I have too much ADHD to sit down and read a book. <laughs> well, EJ, if, so, if, if, you, if you if if you're not tired of my voice yet, I, I want to let you know that I'm I'm also the one who narrates the book too. So. Let me know what you think after you listen to it. I prefer all. Okay. I prefer all. To, to to so that's that's good news. It'll be、awesome. a it'll be a at least a semi familiar voice. There you go. There you go. So at、um, I haven't really explained a, a whole lot of EJ and I's background and and what it is that we do on the day to day. But one of the things that、um, companies that EJ owns co owns and I work at is Y Picket Team Management. So, Y Picket Team Management is a business management consulting firm, and one of the things that we do for some of our clients is offer a quarterly book review. So, we'll pick a book, and we will,、uh, as a team of those team members, we'll read it, and then we'll gather together and discuss it. What did you learn? What did you agree with? What did you disagree with? What what impacted you? So on and so forth.、Um, Anyways, I bring that up to say, EJ, we should probably consider this as one of the books that we、uh, absolutely we should. No, and, and and Josh, it's right in line with what we're doing with White、oh, yeah. Picket,、mm -hmm. um, and, and really what I'm focused on as as we build the Petways Millionaire brand, we're still very early on in that in that journey.、Mm -hmm. But I love what you're what you're talking about here. It's key that just it all starts with mindset and self talk.、Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's something that we are very well aligned with. I'm really looking forward to the book because、um, the more that it's、uh, the amount of people out there that need to understand that, and it's not taught and talked about anywhere. At least in my experience, the world I came from, I was raised middle class and is as functional as you get in a lot of ways. But I was not taught these things in my in my household and in, within my my family, and so. Sure. The amount of people out there need to learn it, and it's it's li it's unlimited,、mm -hmm. and but but it all comes down to mindset and self talk.、Uh, it does require action too, but yeah, it was really it was really um, uh, um, what's the word? It was inspiring to hear you talking about what about what you what you're doing because it does fall very much so in line with what we what we're doing with White Picket. And what we're doing with the Petways Millionaire brand. Thank、Please、you, Jay. What, what we're striving for. Sure. Yeah. Well, and and I'm I'm glad you shared that. You know, something that、um, I want 
your listeners to know and, and anyone who reads the book is um, for years, I didn't view myself as a leader. And so a lot of what I talk about comes from my own self-doubt, my own lack of confidence and lack of belief and imposter syndrome, which is one of the chapters in the book too. And so there's a, there's a familiar um, a familiarity that I have with the things I talk about because I've lived it and experienced it. And it, it really wasn't until you know, later in life where I started viewing things differently and started doing things differently. And I wish that I knew what I know now 20 years ago um, because right. th- there's, I, know, I know there was a lot of opportunities for me to impact and make a difference. And I probably didn't, I didn't, I probably didn't capture those because I didn't know how to. Right. So, uh, in addition to this book, which is awesome, you have a podcast. Explain the podcast. When did it start? Who do you like to have on? What, what's the purpose of it? Go through that. Sure. Well, I, I think I shared with you, my mission is to reach people and build leaders. And so, um, the podcast was started about 11 months ago. I, I left my corporate job about 11 months ago and I started it almost immediately. And I said, you know what? I, I was expecting to leave my corporate job and not have a whole lot of time uh, um, to, or, and, and, sorry, and have plenty of time to do a lot of things I wanted to, um, not expecting to have, you know, a bunch of clients almost overnight. And um, so I jumped into this this podcast thing, and I think now I'm 20, 28, 29 episodes in, and um, I would say maybe a third of the episodes are solo episodes. Um, the other two thirds, um, I have I'll have guests on, um, but. You know, I, it's it's interesting. I, I don't really have like this ideal guest uh, avatar. Um, I, I, I want to find people who are interested in um, helping me reach people and build leaders. And if you have a story, which everyone does, I want to give you a platform to share it. I want to highlight and honor every guest who comes on and allow you the opportunity to, to, to reach as many people as possible. And, you know, I don't have a, a large audience by any means, but I have a few listeners, and and I'm 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 excited to, to to have anyone who is excited to jump on the podcast with me. Yeah, that's awesome. We also have a few listeners, <laughs> and we're on our way up. <laughs> yeah. Um, but dude, I found uh, so I I was recently asked to go um, speak at a conference in the uh, home services industry, and what was funny is that they asked me to speak on. <laughs> creating social media for your for 2024 like what's the strategy what's the plan um and the person that spoke right before me was basically saying that it's not necessary <laughs> and so it was really fun to you know try to, to angle that one so i changed my approach kind of uh mid me starting to talk and i actually like the direction that i end up taking it that i agree that in the home services industry you don't need to have a social media account to make money, right? That's not a necessary thing. It's a wise thing, but it's not necessary. But if maybe we change our focus on a building a social media strategy to let's focus on building a community, like yeah, what if we good. focus on just building a community and something that is um, important to us, that's been impactful for us. So, okay, that's what we want to focus on is building a community surrounded by, let's say leadership, a podcast is such a great way to knock out two birds with one stone, talk to people, network, have connections, and relate yeah. to people, and um, film it, and then you can publish that in your social media, and you're you're on your way with some consistency, right? And so the That's podcasting right. obviously been around for for quite a while, but I think it's still in many ways new, and there's not, you know, it's not like social media, right? And so I think that there's a lot of room for improvement with how podcasting can be done um, but just in its roots uh, getting to connect and network with people and share stories because like you said everyone has their own story their own perspective to bring to the table um, so I wanted to ask you you're clearly very well spoken did that is that natural did is that a skill that was learned over time Ben, you probably noticed I have the biggest smile on my face because no, it is not natural. Um, so that's, I take that as a huge compliment. Um, so thank you for that. If you would have known me 10 years ago, right before I started with Christian Brothers, you would know, you would think, hey, you're not supposed to be doing what you're doing now. You're not supposed to be going and doing these keynote speeches 
and coaching people and training the way that you're doing. Um, I don't know that I had a crippling fear of public speaking, but it was pretty close. I mean, um, I, I've heard John Maxwell say that the that the uh, that the the person uh, um, people are more afraid of public speaking than death. So people yeah. would rather be rather be in the grave than giving their eulogy, right? And so, um, but what happened was I was given an opportunity to speak in front of people and train people and was well out of my comfort zone, but we talked about getting comfortable being uncomfortable in order to grow. We know that growth and comfort cannot coexist. And so it was, it took years and years of practice and practice and practice, and I'm still practicing and practicing and practicing. Um, it truly is a skill that needs to be practiced and honed and developed over time. But I do appreciate the compliment. Um, it's it's something that took a, a, a lot of years of, of hard work. And the beauty in all of this is this is, for me, more confirmation that I am doing what I was called to do because mm -hmm. other opportunities are presenting themselves for me to go speak at different organizations. Um, in, in July here of this year, I'll be, go, I'll be doing a keynote at Texas A&M. And, you know, if you would have told me that wow. uh, I, even even three months ago, I'd be like, nah, I'm not, you know, it's, 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 I'm not ready. Like, I don't, I don't think it's not going to happen. And, but, you know, again, I feel like God keeps on putting things in my path mm -hmm. and um, I'm just really enjoying the opportunity. Yeah. You mentioned John Maxwell. What's your favorite John Maxwell book? He's one of my oh, favorites. Man. Is he? Okay. Um, I mean, I, I feel like it's probably, it's probably a cliche for me to say the 21 year people laws of leadership. Um, but I, I really think that probably is I, that's the one I've written I've read the most, and um, yeah. well, he, he has what like 80, 80 or ninety. He has like now? eighty eight. So you couldn't possibly. I mean, may, very few Crazy. people probably read them all. I've definitely yeah. not even read half of them. But the ones hey, I've read, yeah. the one that comes to mind, twenty one irrefutable laws, obviously classic. Um, five levels of leadership I liked a lot. Yeah. Okay. Have you, have you, have you, I say listen because I listened to them all. Have you read that one? I think I actually listened to that one. So I, I read and listen, okay. but uh, yeah, okay. but I've, I've, I've read or listened to both of those. And um, I probably only read, I would say maybe, maybe five or six, but those two are, uh, uh, you know, yeah. in, in the category. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ben so. and I went through his Maxwell leadership training uh, two and a half years ago, I think now. That, that was kind of awesome. the kickoff to uh, a YouTube page and really starting to talk about building a, a following and a brand. A personal brand. Well, you know something that, was that you shared, Ben. Stage is a white picket. Okay, so like a, two and a half years ago. It was when we started talking about doing uh, what we're doing now with white picket team management. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Well, you know something that you mentioned, Ben, um, I, and I didn't want to glaze over it, but you said the powerful word, which is community. I think community is so important. I think when you surround yourself with your tribe, find people mm -hmm. who are. Um, uh, supporting, but also growing and holding you accountable in what you're doing. I think that's, that's critical. And just, I mean, just two months ago, um, or uh, almost three months ago, I created a, a Facebook community, a private leadership Facebook group. And we're now over 550 people in the group. And the idea is to do exactly what you discussed. You create a community of people, like-minded people, mm -hmm. people who want to grow, develop, grow and develop together. And um, I think whether it's on social media or whether it's in your personal life, in real life, um, being able to surround yourself with people who are um, just constantly helping you stay at the standard that you are defining right. day after day, I think is, is, is key. Josh, I'm a daily user of Facebook. It's my preferred platform. What's, uh, what's the group called? Oh, just about that. Awesome. If you go to Limitless Leadership uh, or if you, if you look at the Limitless Leadership Facebook group and, uh, and you'll, you'll, you'll see it there. Yeah, limitless leadership. Perfect. Yes, sir. We're all going to get connected Am now. I joining right yeah. now. <laughs> and I love it. I only have to answer two questions. I don't have to answer ten. <laughs> uh, yeah, I kept it pretty simple for you. There it is. Sorry, I'm doing it right now because I don't have to otherwise. <laughs> hey, go for it. I'm going to go ahead and approve you right now. So we're we're all just working while we're podcasting. I'm being a smart aleck on the where where in your leadership journey would you like to be in six months from now? And I said on Mars. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I that's what came to mind. <laughs> uh, I'm going to play off of that one and say Pluto. Is that okay? Are you that's the fair. one? I'm, I'm, uh, yeah. So, so are you, you're grassrooting this, this. Is this something you started yourself? You're actually reviewing. Uh, are you on social media quite frequently? 
I am yeah, quite frequently. I, I would say daily. I'm posting something at least once a day. And um, this is something. Uh, so I, I started this at the end of January and um, just trying to grow this community. Um, yeah, that's help as many people How did you get the initial 500? Like, did you just get that from your social media groups uh, in existing from just sharing on or did you? We we hit over 500 about two weeks ago. And so we're, we're growing, I would say, about 30 people a week. And um, I think after the first when I launched it, maybe maybe um, after the first t- couple of weeks, I was right around 150, almost 200. And it's just slowly and organically spread over the last couple of months. So I'm, I'm really I'm really liking the organic growth of it right now. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. What, what contributed to the, the first hundred, would you say? Uh, just people in my network, people who are friends of mine, you know, just uh, sending out the invites and letting people know about it. That's awesome. I had a, a question that it kind of popped up a little while ago. Someone said this to me a long time ago, um, that you find fulfillment in your life when you can combine your vocation and calling into one thing. So you talked about that with your pursuit and as being an entrepreneur, doing the things that you love. Mm-hmm. But there's so many people that know that, like know, uh, that have the knowledge of, oh, yeah, that makes total sense but the taking the initial step, what advice would you give to someone who's like right there at the door who knows what they want to do, but is afraid to take that first step? Do it scared. Do it scared. I mean, it's one of those things where we, we always will find evidence in things we believe. And so if I'm going to say, you know what, I don't know that I'm ready. I don't know that I'm prepared. I don't know that now is the right time. I'm going to find evidence that supports all of those thoughts that I have. And we have to remember Mm. that when we take action, confidence and motivation tends to follow it's we think it's the other way around we think i have to be confident i have to be motivated then i can go and that and and i'm saying no take action just go and you're going to gain confidence and motivation beyond that so staying in the same vein of faith this is like saying hey god uh show me and i'll trust you and he's saying no trust me and i'll show you and this is where it's like you know what take action just do it just take that step and then take the next step and then take the next step. Too many of us are focused on the end in mind and not the steps that it takes in order to get here. And we get overwhelmed and we find all the reasons why we shouldn't take that step. So I'd say just do it scared. Every bit of my experience in the last 20 years speaks exactly to that. Mm. Just do it scared. Do it Do it before you're caught. Every bit of my experience tell, tells me that that is absolutely dead on. Well, then EJ, mm-hmm. you, you know that because it's 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 so easy for me to say this, right? Well, hey, just do it scared. Just do it. Yeah, all you got to do it. And it's like, well, hey, hey, man, you're, you're not me. Like, you're not me. And you're just mm-hmm. telling me to go and do it. But we need, to, we need to remember that the similarity between faith and fear is that they both believe in a future that hasn't happened yet. So just yeah. take that step and then exercise faith. Yeah. You can still do it scared and exercise faith, but just take that step. And, um, man, it, it, it always works. Like, when you take yeah. the step, you look back and you're like, you know, I don't, I don't regret that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. On my, uh, on my, uh, wrist, I have one tattoo on my wrist and it's faith. It's here. It's in Greek faith. Okay. Yeah. Hebrews 11, one Hebrews 11, one is, uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. And that's exactly what it is. I mean, you, you gotta, you gotta have that, that faith. You, you can be scared and still have faith. You just, you, you've got to work through the fear. And the fear can be, it doesn't have to be what we perceive as fear. It could be mm-hmm. just not acting and you subconsciously you're fearful. Consciously, you may not be fearful at all, but that lack of action, that lack of, of being willing to take that, make that commitment is oftentimes rooted in fear and it's not even recognized as that. A hundred percent. EJ, I was looking for a, a picture to show you on my phone. My wife just got that scripture on her, tattooed on her arm last week. Oh, wow. Hebrew, Hebrews 11 oh, wow. right That's here. Crazy. And yeah. yeah, I got that. Yeah, I got I got this one tattoo July 4th of uh, my, when I was 21. I think that's 2006. Actually, about awesome. the time I started, I incorporated my, my first business. Oh, awesome. Okay. Um, so that's kind of been my life, my life verse. I joke. That's the only verse I know by heart. I don't know any <laughs> others by heart. That's I'm okay. Very good memories. That's all right. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. So, uh, Josh, I'd love to know. um like there's two pieces that I want to get at. Could you walk me through? Okay. So you just said so many great things and I'm like, all right, I'm ready to sign up. 
right? So walk me through what does it look like for someone to be a part of your coaching? And then um, in a minute, I'd like to get to what does the future look like for your business and the impact that you want to have? Thank you, Ben. So um, I do a three month coaching program and I call it a program because what I want everyone to recognize is that change doesn't happen overnight and we need to be consistent in the, the, the practice in order to make the progress. Practice doesn't make perfect, practice makes progress. We gotta be consistent though. And so I'm asking for a three month commitment. And what we do is we jump on a weekly Zoom call and calls are scheduled for about an hour. And we have a running Google doc that we also work off of. So I begin every call asking you, hey Ben, what are some of your latest wins? I believe that what gets celebrated gets repeated. And as I shared earlier, we have all these thoughts that will dictate ultimately the legacy that we're going to lead. And, and that can also be interchangeable with the results that we're trying to achieve. Our thoughts dictate feelings, feelings dictate actions, actions dictate our results. And so if we're not achieving the results we want to achieve, let's go back to our thoughts. And most of our thoughts, as we shared, are negative. We, we, we can very easily identify the negative things happening in our life, the losses that we're experiencing in our life. But are we really capturing and celebrating the wins? What gets celebrated gets repeated. So let's get a win and let's start stacking those wins. We then walk through what last week's call to action was. Sometimes I give you a call to action, sometimes I don't. And then we typically talk about what you want to talk about on the call. Uh, prior to every call, I ask you to complete a two-question survey. They never change. It's always, number one, did you complete last week's call to action? Yes or no. Number two, what are the top one to two things we'll be discussing on our next coaching call? So we'll walk through that. Um, I think a common misconception for a lot of folks about coaching is I'm going to hire a coach and he's going to get, he or she is going to give me all the, all the answers, all the life advice, everything I need in order to just go do great things. And something I'm really excited to share is that you already have the answers within you. My role as a coach is to help you discover them. It's help you discover that greatness that you already had inside of you. So I ask a lot of questions. I listen and I model what listening empathetically looks like. Um, I, I, I work on creating safety and trust so that I can provide clarity and direction. You can get perspective and with perspective, the way that you view things drives the way that we do things. So I walk through a three phase process over the course of three months. Each phase is dependent upon the client. It's not a, a phase per month kind of thing, but the first phase is the discovery phase. This is where I spend some time asking you a lot about who you are. I'm asking you to share whatever you're willing to share with me about who Ben Gonzalez is and the things that, that occur in your life that kind of that make you the person you are today. Um, born here, raised here, here's some life experiences, here's where, I, here's where I'm currently at and here's where I wanna go. Once I have a better understanding of who you are, why you think the way that you do, why you operate the way that you do, I then utilize that information to customize your second phase of the program, which is the action phase. In the action phase, we work heavily on some mindset stuff. We work on some self-leadership stuff. There are five areas I believe that we can level up in our life each and every day, which is spiritually, physically, emotionally, academically, and financially. And so I'm not an expert in any of those five things, but what I do is I help you become more, uh, hyper aware of the five areas that you can be working on. And we work on mindset, leadership, and life. And then beyond that, we go into the third phase, which is the coaching phase, which is where I'm teaching you how to teach your team how to fish, as we said earlier, right? How to lead, how to coach, how to train, and how to manage. Those four things, leadership, coaching, training, and management, all four are necessary, but all four are, are done differently. And so that's the three phase uh, pro pr process through the program. And then beyond that, if you uh, see the value, see the benefit in the three months, we can keep on working together uh, month after month. And um, I mentioned earlier, I, you know, blessed to have uh, a, a full book of, of clients. Um, as at the timing of this recording, we're at, at, we're in April, and um, my next opening is um, in going to be in uh, early June. And so there's a, a bit of a wow. about a two month wait list right now. How'd you go from being full time at Christian Brothers to doing this and really filling filling your schedule pretty quickly? You mentioned a few times. How how'd you do that? What do you credit that with? Um, I, I, so I, I credit that with the reputation that I was able to create at within the brand. Um, you know, when I made the announcement that I was leaving, my phone started blowing up. And it was from a lot of Christian Brothers folks. It was from franchisees. It was from former training attendees. Yeah. And what I realized, I didn't know until that moment, EJ, that years ago, I planted the seed and I, I consistently watered the grass over the course of my time there. And I really reap the benefits when I left. And 
you know, it was never like anytime I connect with anyone, I, I mean, I genuinely love people. So it's not hard for me to want to get to know who Ben and EJ are. Um, but over the course of time, I would see a training attendee who'd come in through the, through the, the week in Houston and we would develop a connection and a relationship. And I would touch base with that person. I was proactive with my communication. I would ask them about their family. I would, I'd make sure I'd call them by name. In the book, How to Win Friends and Influence yeah. People by Dale Carnegie, we talk about how the sweetest sound to any person in any language is the sound of a person's name. So utilize their yeah. name, utilize their family members' names. And what I realized was years ago, I planted the seed, I watered the grass, and then when I left, people started calling and say, hey, what are you doing now? I told them, and they said, okay, we'll hire you. And I'm like, what? And like, yeah, we'll hire nice. you. And I'm like, okay. And, it, and, and then it just, it, just it, it went from there. And it's, since then, uh, word of mouth has allowed me to get uh, more clients, not just with Christian Brothers folks. Now, about half my clients now are Christian Brothers folks, but it started out as 100% more Christian Brothers folks. Right, right. So. Man, that's awesome. Um, so, what, yeah, what's next? Like, do you want to grow your team? Do you want to author more books? What are you wanting to um, build into next? So my, my ultimate my ultimate vision for Limitless Leadership, so that's the, that's the, the company uh, that I created, um, which is called Limitless Leadership LLC. What I envision is, a, is an umbrella, and underneath the umbrella, there are a variety of different coaches. There are a, a variety of different trainers and a variety of different speakers. So while I market myself as a leadership coach, I mentioned to you that I'm married to a licensed professional counselor. My wife is a mindset coach under the Limitless Leadership umbrella. My sister, who, who lives in Austin, is a fitness coach uh, who works under the Limitless Leadership umbrella. Eventually, I'd like to bring on a finance coach and different trainers and different speakers. So if someone is looking for any of those three for their team, for their organization, for a convention, I would like to say that the Limitless Leadership name develops in a way where people can trust the name. It's a reputable brand. And they say, hey, you know what? This company probably has someone – that I'm looking for. Let me reach out to them. And that's ultimately my vision for Limitless Leadership. Mm -hmm. Man, that's, that's awesome. so cool. So, but more books, I'm sure, right? You're going to write, you want to do all, you want to, and maybe others writing uh, under the brand as well. Pr probably so. I mean, this is something that I, I could see, um, I could see another book coming out in the next three to five years. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the, 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 the greatest area that I've seen that we've been able to capture for clients is this combination of communication and delegation. And, and, and you're kind of linking in the one-on-ones mm -hmm. and the, the right questions to ask during the one-on-ones and, and really how to navigate the one-on-ones. If, if, if anyone who's listening to this podcast is leading people and your team members don't feel like their voice is heard, their opinions matter, or their ideas are considered, then respectfully, you might be missing an opportunity in leadership. And so the coaching, the training, um, even the book will will kind of dive into to what this could look like for you and your organization. Mm -hmm. That's so cool, dude. Um, well, listen, there's a lot more that I'd love to dive into. Um, you know, the uh, technical difficulties struck our time down just a, a little bit. We do have to get rolling on here. We've got another podcast that we're about to get started on. Um, but Josh, undoubtedly, I want to continue to stay connected. Like I mentioned before, the pursuit to build a community um, that doesn't just go away. Um, that's something that our team is, is focused on. I'm heavily focused on. So I'd love to continue to stay connected in whatever way that makes sense. Um, but dude, thank you so much for being a part of uh, the, the conversation today. This was really great. Absolutely. Yeah, I'd love to talk more, talk more about what we're doing with Shoreby and Scoop Soldiers as well. And uh, and get to know, like we said, build that community. Yes, sir. Hey, thank you guys both so much. It was an honor to be on your show. Uh, thank you for asking and excited to grow this relationship. Thank you, Josh. Appreciate you, sir. Likewise. It's a pleasure.